This is the Riverhawk Report. The midwinter break is here. We're checking on the winter sports teams. Men's basketball, the focus today. Six wins, two losses at the break. A conversation now with the head coach, Greg Horenda. Let's for the moment take the record out of it, take the scores out of it. Do you like the way this team's approaching the game of basketball on the floor? I I do. I do, and I think it's a work in progress. We have, Bob, a good majority of our team last year is back, and our newcomers are finding their way through the system. And gelling those two groups has been uh, the challenge so far. But to be 6-2 and two, with that going on, I mean, I'm, I'm a happy guy. But like we talked about prior to this interview, you want to win every game, but there are a lot of coaches out there in America that would really, you know, want to be 6-2 and two and 4-2 and two in the league going into Christmas. And But I'm, I'm happy, but as a coach, I just want to strive to improve. We need to continue to improve, and that's what we do every day. And that's really not a cliche, but that's that's how we live around here. All right, now let's put scores and wins and losses back into the equation. Yeah. What do we do when we win that we're not doing when we lose? What is the defining difference? So far, it's making shots. We, we shot poorly uh, at both Merrimack and Bentley, but... You know, you have to give those opponents credit for making you shoot poorly. So when we shoot the ball, we could be very good. But at the end of the day, we need to defend, and we're defending well. We need to run more. We ran against San Anselms and against Franklin Pierce and had two good quality wins at home. But I, I think our program, just like last year, it stems from our defensive uh, standpoint. When we defend and we can get out and run and share the ball and get good shots, then our shots flow. So I think the end result is making shots. But before that, you need to defend and rebound. And when we do those two things, then our offense opens up, and uh, I think we have a lot of good good games and good opportunities in front of us, and we're going down to Florida, and uh, we're playing two monster teams down there, and we have to play better basketball, but, but right now at 6-2, and two, I'm content. All offense comes from defense, and if that is the case, is this team good enough, tough enough defensively? I think we should be, because we have, you know, we have seniors. You know, we have seniors, and we have size. You know, with, with the addition of Kingsley Onyechi and, and, and Ali around the basket, it's very hard to score against us, and our perimeter defense is quick. We added Scotty Tavares with Kyle Kaola and you know Craig Heatherly's been hurt and that's a big subtraction for us with Craig defensively and, and his ability to rebound from the guard spot. But I, I think there's no reason we shouldn't be a good defensive team but you know when you run up, we ran up against Bentley when they played probably the best game they've played I've seen in two years and, and Merrimack on their court. If you don't you know defend for 40 minutes then you're going to have a, a situation where you know you're going to give other people opportunities and then it's going to be hard for you on offense. So, But to answer your question question, Bob. We need to be better defensively. I think we're pretty good. We steal the ball. We block shots, but we need to improve in that that phase of the game as well. Are we a team that if we're going to be successful, we've got to hit long-range shots? Or can we say, okay, let's abandon that for the moment, let's work inside, or must we hit those from beyond the three-point arc if we're going to win? It's an excellent question. I think if we could score a little bit better around the basket, and Ali and Kingsley are, are men, and they're big men, and if they score inside, that's going to take the pressure off You know, Kevin Carr, uh, who got on fire the last week before exams. He got you know really, really good looks, and Kyle Keolo, who's been fantastic. So I think the better Ali and, and Kingsley score around the basket, the better our perimeter people are going to be and and we have good passers out of the post too. Uh, Ali against Franco Pierce in the second half really passed the ball well so we need to go inside out to alleviate the pressure on our outside game and and I think that's when we really get good Bob both our interior and our guards will be playing well at the same time then we're going to be very hard to guard and quite honestly very hard to beat. Watching this team this year as opposed to last year it seems as though this team has more depth more weapons than it had a year ago. Oh absolutely like right now we have 14 players on our team and we took on Pete Steer, who's a who's a walk-on, who's really improved, and we put him in a game the other night and played five minutes against Pierce. We don't have any bad basketball players, <laughs> and I say that with all due respect. There are teams in this country and in our conference that once you get to 10, 11, 12, 13, you know, they're, they're not good players. We have a lot of good players, and that's hard for me because now, you know, I can only play eight or nine guys consistent minutes, so we have a lot of competition in practice. I have a hard time not playing guys. I, last year, we played everybody because we only had, our roster was 11 and we had an injury or two, so we were, I was playing everyone on the bench, knew they were going to play almost every game. And this year, that's not the case and I'm kind of a softie. I like kids work hard in practice. I want to reward them. But right now, I can only
only go nine or ten deep, and then that means four guys are not playing. So, uh, but that's a good thing. That means our program's going in the right direction. We have depth, we have length, we have we're athletic, we're, we're strong, we have skilled guys, and but most of all, we got guys that work hard every, every day in practice. It tells me also that practice is a competition. I mean, you've got to go out there and perform in practice if right. you want to get a chance to perform yeah. in the game. Well, you know, for our red team, the team that plays against our blue team, and our blue team's our starters and our top two guys off the bench, it's an opportunity every day to come in and if you want a blue jersey, go be better and tougher and stronger and run our offense and our defense is better than the guy in the blue shirt. And I'm an equal opportunity coach. So if, if, if it's a walk-on that deserves minutes, he's going to get it. So there's always an opportunity every day for our players to move up the ladder. And, you know, Marcus Johnson was down on the ladder early in the preseason and now has, has worked himself to be number nine or eight. And back in the preseason, he was number 10 or 11. So, you know, it, it takes time. But if you go in a game and you produce, I'm, I want to win. <laughs> so I'm going to put the guys on the floor that, that are going to help me win. And, and that, that happens in practice more often than not. And that's how I substitute. And it's difficult, but it's a good problem to have too many good players. Last year, this team surprised a lot of people. This year, more people circled this game on their schedule because this was a good basketball yeah. team. Does that change things for you now? Uh, suddenly you're a big game on everybody else's schedule. It does. And when, you know, last year we won 13 straight games. That means 13, you beat 13 straight people. So that they, and just like we lost games last year, we remember who we lost to. And it's difficult because now we're the hunted. And I think the, you know, the hungry cat is the best hunter. And we need to stay hungry. And that's a daily basis of of work and a, a mindset where last year we didn't know how good or bad we were. This year we, th- we we have an idea of how good we can be, but that sometimes gets gets in the way of progress. So I just want our guys hungry and be the underdog all the time. And psychologically, we try to play on that. But then realistically, we're you know now we're picked third. Last year we were picked twelfth and have you know have virtually the same people returning, but we added some good players. So I think the coaches have respect for us, and I, I think the players on the other team do, and and that means they're going to come at us, and 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 that's the job now for us. It's 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 a difficult job, but in college basketball basketball, if you're not hungry, you know, you got a problem. And it's my job and the, and the captain's job, Max Kerman, and our senior's job to stay hungry and focused because we've got a lot of unfinished business to um, to rectify going into this, uh, this this second semester. All right, you've been picked third. How good a team can this be? I think, you know, we can be as good as, uh, number one, our seniors are. You know, Ali Kanan is playing well. He needs to play better. Kingsley is a, is a newcomer. If the quicker he learns, he needs to play better. Kevin's been playing great since th- that week of, you know, really poor shooting by everybody. Craig Heatherly's got to get healthy. I think our, your seniors in college basketball, in, in the old school days that we talked about before, that's your team. And right now, my seniors, other than Kevin shooting the basketball, haven't been real productive. So it puts more pressure on Romeo Diaz and, and Scotty. And, and Kyle Kaol has just been, you know, he's been a rock for us. He, uh, you know, he's scoring the basketball. He's running our offense. He steals the basketball. I've said since the day I got here, we need a point guard that's great and a big man that's going to be great. And right now, Ali and Kingsley have been good. I think when those guys get great and KO is great and then Carr's making shots and Romeo's coming off the bench and Max Kerman scoring, you know, when it all comes together, you know, to answer your question, we can be great. But until that point, I mean, it's you got to play and you got to earn what you get. And right now we, we need to play better. But to be 6-2 and two and not playing as well as we can play at this juncture and knowing that we have to improve, I kind of like where our, our mindset is, you know, as a basketball team going into Christmas. Is there anybody this team can't beat? UConn. <laughs> <laughs> we we proven that two years in a row. But no, you know, we lost to Bentley and played not well, and they played great. Stonehill beat Bentley by 19 the other night. So in our league, we can beat, you know, anybody. And I, I think the only team in the two years now that I've been here that we haven't beat is Bentley. And uh, we have that game kind of circled, not because we need to get back at them, but they, they've proven to be a better team than us over the last number of years, and we need to see if we can, cha- you know, turn that around. But, you know, Merrimack's a very good team, you know, with Duncan, and but I'm worried about every game and we go down to Florida Bob and play Clayton State and they are athletic and they're good and then we play the winner of Shaw who's from North Carolina and Rollins who's ranked sixth in America so you know in Division two basketball there are a lot of good players just like in Division one basketball and to beat anybody you have to play for 40 minutes and play well and that's uh, you know that's what we pride ourselves in we practice hard every day for two and a half hours and we like to think that the, the work constitutes and begets winning and, and that's how if we start worrying about winning games and forget about the work. We're not going to win as many games as we would like. Coach, thank you. Bob, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Happy holidays to everybody out there.